the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with, you. with you. Sisters and brothers in Christ, on this most holy night, when our Savior Jesus Christ passed from death to life, we gather with the church throughout the world in vigil and prayer. This is the Passover of Jesus Christ, through light and the word, through water and oil, bread and wine, we proclaim Christ's death and resurrection, share Christ's triumph over sin and death, and await Christ's coming again in glory. Let us pray. Eternal God in Jesus Christ, you have given the light of life to all the world. Bless this new fire. Increase in us a desire to shine forth with the brightness of Christ rising until we feast the banquet of eternal light through the Son of Righteousness, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the ending, to Christ belongs all time, all ages. To Christ belongs glory and dominion forever and ever. Christ rising in glory, dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. The light of Christ, thanks be to God. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Rejoice now, our heavenly powers. Sing choirs of angels, exalt all creation around God's throne. Jesus Christ is risen. Celebrate the divine mysteries with exaltation. Fight for so great a victory. Sound the trumpet of salvation. Rejoice, O oh, earth in shining splendor, radiant in the brightness of your King. Christ has conquered, glory fills you, darkness vanishes forever. Rejoice, O Holy Church, exalt in glory, the risen Savior shines upon you. Let this place resound with joy, Echoing the mighty song of all God's people. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that with full 
pure devotion of heart and mind and voice, we should praise the invisible God and the only Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who by his precious blood redeemed us from bondage to the ancient sin. For this indeed is the Paschal Feast, in which the true Lamb is slain, by whose blood the doorposts of the faithful are made holy. This is the night, this is the night, in which in ancient times you delivered our forebears, the children of Israel, and led them dry shot through the sea. This is the night, this is the night, in which the darkness of sin has been purged away by the rising brightness. This is the night, this is the night, in which all who believe in Christ are rescued from evil and the gloom of sin, are renewed in grace, and are restored to holiness. This is the night, this is the night, in which, breaking the chains of death, Christ arises from hell in triumph. Oh, night truly blessed, which alone was worthy to know the time and the hour in which Christ arose again from hell. This is the night this is the night of which it is written the night is clear as the day and then shall my night be turned into day the holiness of this night puts to flight the deeds of wickedness washes away sin restores innocence to the fallen and joy to those who mourn casts out hate brings peace and humbles earthly pride therefore in this night of grace Receive, O God, our praise and thanksgiving for the light of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, reflected in the burning of this candle. We sing the glories of this pillar of fire, the brightness of which is not diminished, even when its light is divided and borrowed. For it is fed by the melting wax, which the bees your servants have made for the substance of this candle. This is the night, this is the night in which heaven and earth are joined, things human and things divine. We therefore pray to you, O God, that this candle, burning to the honor of your name, will continue to vanquish the dark of night 
And speaking God with unlights of heaven, make Christ the morning star. Find it beneath that morning star who never sets. That morning star who, rising from the grave, faithfully sheds light on the whole human race. And we pray, O oh God, who govern and preserve with your continual protection your whole church, giving us peace in this time of our Paschal rejoicing. Through the same Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives with you and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal giver of life and light, this holy night shines with the radiance of the risen Christ. Renew your church with the spirit given in baptism, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth, and may shine as a light in the world. Through your Son Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. All you see, all you don't see. Earth was a soup of nothingness, a bottomless emptiness, an inky blackness. God's spirit brooded like a bird above the watery abyss. God spoke, light, and light appeared. God saw that light was good and separated light from dark. God named the light day, God named the dark night. It was evening, it was morning, day one. God spoke, sky, in the middle of the waters, separate water from water. God made sky. God separated the water under sky from the water above sky. And there it was. God named sky the heavens. It was evening, it was morning, day two. God spoke, separate. Water beneath heaven, gather into one place. Land, appear. And there it was. God named the land earth. God named the pooled water ocean. God saw that it was good. God spoke. Earth, green up. Grow all varieties of seed-bearing plants. Every sort of fruit-bearing tree. And there it was. Earth produced green seed-bearing plants all varieties, and fruit-bearing trees of all sorts. God saw that it was good. It was evening. It was morning. Day three. God spoke. Lights, come out. Shine in heaven's sky. Separate day from night. Mark seasons and days and years. Lights in heaven's sky to give light to earth. And there it was. God made two big lights, the larger to take charge of day, the smaller to be in charge of night. And he made the stars. God placed them in the heavenly sky to light up earth and oversee day and night, to separate light and dark. God saw that it was good. It was evening. It was morning. Day four. God spoke. Swarm, ocean, with fish and all sea life. Birds fly through the sky over earth. God created the huge whales, all the swarms of life in the waters, and every kind and species of flying birds. God saw that it was good. God blessed them. Prosper, reproduce, fill ocean. Birds, reproduce on earth. It was evening. It was morning. Day five. God spoke, earth generate life, 
every sort and kind, cattle and reptiles and wild animals, all kinds. And there it was, wild animals of every kind, cattle of all kinds, every sort of reptile and bug. God saw that it was good. God spoke. Let us make human beings in our image, making them reflecting our nature, so they can be responsible for the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, the cattle, and yes, earth itself, and every animal that moves on the face of earth. God created human beings. God created them godlike, reflecting God's nature. God created them male and female. God bless them. Prosper, reproduce, fill earth, take charge. Be responsible for fish in the sea and birds in the air, for every living thing that moves on the face of earth. Then God said, I've given you every sort of seed-bearing plant on earth and every kind of fruit-bearing tree, given them to you for food. To all animals and all birds, everything that moves and breathes, I give whatever grows out of the ground for food. And there it was. God looked over everything he had made. It was so good, so very good. It was evening. It was morning. Day six. Heaven and earth were finished, down to the last detail. By the seventh day, God had finished the work. On the seventh day, God rested from all this work. God blessed the seventh day. God made it a holy day because on that day, God rested from the work, all the creating God had done. This is the story of how it all started, of heaven and earth when they were created. He's got the whole world washing hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got everybody in his hands. He's got everybody in his hands. He's got everybody here in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me, brother, in his hands. He's got everybody washing hands. He's got you and me, sister, in his hands. She's got the whole world in her hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's, He's got, got the whole wide world. world. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. A reading from Exodus. The people of Israel had been slaves in Egypt for 400 years. God asked Moses to lead them back to the place where their ancestors had lived. Pharaoh and the Egyptians didn't want them to leave and followed them out of the desert. The people of Israel turned around and saw that the Egyptians were catching up. They were scared and cried out to God to save them. They yelled at Moses, Why did you bring us out here? Because there weren't any graves in Egypt? It would have been better to stay in Egypt as slaves than to die out here in the middle of nowhere. But Moses said to the people, Get a grip. Don't be afraid. Today, God will fight for us. You'll see. And those Egyptians you see chasing us, that's the last we'll ever see of them. Let God do his work. When Moses told God that the people were complaining, God said, Why? Tell them to put one foot in front of the other. When you reach the sea, lift up your walking stick, stretch your hand out over the water, and it will divide into two, and they will be able to walk on dry ground to freedom. The Egyptians will follow you in, but they won't come out the other side. They'll know that I am God. The angel of God had been leading the people of Israel, but moved to the back. A pillar of cloud that had been leading them moved behind them too. Between the people of Israel and the Egyptians to keep them apart during the night. When they got to the sea, Moses did what God told him. 
he lofted his walking stick and his hand over the water. And God used the wind to divide the sea and make a dry path right through the water on either side of them. The Egyptians came in after them. They started to panic and they got stuck in the mud. They tried to turn back, but they couldn't. They said to themselves, it looks like God is on the side of the people of Israel. Let's get out of here. God told Moses to stretch out his hand over the water again. Not a single Egyptian or his chariot got out before the sea returned back to normal. That's how God saved the people of Israel. They were amazed at what God had done for them. They believed that God was on their side, and he believed in his servant Moses. Moses' sister Miriam and the women danced and sang with tambourines. Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider God has thrown into the sea. A reading from Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 to 14. I felt the Lord's power take control of me, and God's Spirit carried me to a valley full of bones. The Lord showed me all around, and everywhere I looked, I saw bones that were dried out. God said, Ezekiel, son of man, can these bones come back to life? I replied, Lord God, only you can answer that. Then God told me to say, 
Dry bones? Listen to what the Lord is saying to you. I, the Lord God, will put breath in you and once again you will live. I will wrap you with muscles and skin and breathe life into you. Then you will know that I am the Lord. I did what the Lord said, but before I finished speaking, I heard a rattling noise. The bones were coming together. I saw muscles and skin cover the bones, but they had no life in them. The Lord said, Ezekiel, now say to the wind, the Lord God commands you to blow from every direction and to breathe life into these dead bodies so they can live again. As soon as I said this, the wind blew among the bodies and they came back to life. They all stood up and there were enough to make a large army. The Lord said, Ezekiel, the people of Israel are like dead bones. They complain that they are dried up and that they have no hope for the future. So tell them, I, the Lord God, promise to open your graves and set you free. I will bring you back to Israel, and when that happens, you will realize that I am the Lord. My spirit will give you breath, and you will live again. I will bring you home, and you will know that I have kept my promise. I, the Lord, have spoken. A reading from Isaiah. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander to the peoples. See, you shall call the nations that you do not know, and the nations that do not know you shall run to you, because the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God, for he will abund abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. 
For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. In baptism, our gracious God frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the Church, the body of Christ. We are united with all the baptized in the one body of Christ, anointed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. I call upon you, therefore, now that our Lenten observance has ended, to renew the solemn promises and vows of baptism, by which we once renounce Satan and all his works, and promise to serve God faithfully in God's holy Catholic Church. Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism as we come before God to make public affirmation of our baptism in Christ. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you that you have made us your own by water and word in baptism. You have called us to yourself, enlightened us with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished us in the community of faith. Uphold us and all your servants in the gifts and promises of baptism and unite the hearts of all whom have been brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the Church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I, I renounce, renounce them. them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I, I renounce, renounce them. them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I, I, I renounce, renounce them. them. Do you believe in God the Father? I, I believe, believe in God the Father the Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I, I believe, believe in Jesus Christ, Christ God's, God's only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Water, water, we praise you, O God, for water. The Raritan and the Rahway, the Delaware and the Hudson, the rivers and lakes and oceans, the rain that nourishes animals and plants, the water for drinking and bathing. We praise you, O God, for water. We praise you, O God, for water. We praise you, O God, for our water stories. A flood that cleansed the earth, the sea that drowned the enemy, a river that healed leprosy. We praise you, O God, for water. We praise you, O God, for water. We remember the waters of Jesus, baptized in the Jordan River, calming the Sea of Galilee, drinking from Jacob's well, healing at the pool of Bethesda, washing the disciples' feet. We praise you, O God, for water. We praise you, O God, for water. We praise you, O God, for this font, for through this water you have birthed us into the family of Christ, bathed us in forgiveness, and enlivened us in the Spirit. We praise you, O God, for baptism. We, we praise you, O God, God for baptism. baptism. O God, you are the ocean, sustaining this earth. O God, you are the river, saving us from death. O God, you are the fountain, granting us health and well-being. We praise you, O God, today, tomorrow, forever. Amen, amen. Amen, amen and amen. amen. People of God, you have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism? To live among God's faithful people? To hear the word of God and share the Lord's Supper? To proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed? To serve all people? Following the example of Jesus and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for one another in your life in Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Stir up within your people the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now we remember our baptism. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Remember your baptism. Remember your baptism. Remember your baptism. You have put on Christ. In him you have been baptized. Alleluia. Alleluia. You have put on Christ. In him you have been baptized. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. 
Alleluia! Christ is risen! Christ is risen indeed! Alleluia! into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of his sin might be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she went bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to, the fa to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Happy Easter. Happy, happy Easter. Lent is over. Christ's sorrow and death is no more. Our sorrow and our death is no more. Christ has risen, and we are filled with joy. For our Easter sermon tonight, I'm actually going to take a bit from the Eastern Orthodox playbook. They, every year, without fail, for a thousand years, read the same sermon on this night. So it must be a good one. It's by St. John of Chrysostom, his Easter homily. Be blessed by these words. Are there any who are devout lovers of God? Let them enjoy this beautiful, bright festival. Are there any who are grateful servants? Let them rejoice and enter into joy of their Lord. Are there any who are weary with fasting? Let them now receive their wages. If any have toiled from the first hour, let them receive their due reward. If any have come after the third hour, let them with gratitude join in the feast. And the one who arrived after the sixth hour, let them not doubt. For they too shall sustain no loss. And if any delayed until the ninth hour, let them not hesitate, but let them come too. And those who arrived only at the eleventh hour, let them not be afraid for any reason of their delay. For the Lord is gracious and receives the last even as the first. God gives rest to those that come at the eleventh hour as well as to those that toiled from the first. To this one God gives, 
and upon another God bestows. God accepts the works as God greets the endeavor. The deed God honors and the intention God commends. Let us all enter into the joy of the Lord. First and last alike, re receive your reward. Rich and poor, rejoice together. Sober and slothful, celebrate the day. You that have kept the fast, and you that have not, rejoice today, for the table is richly laden. Feast royally on it, the calf is a fatted one. Let no one go away hungry. Partake all of the cup of faith. Enjoy all the riches of God's goodness. Let no one grieve at their poverty, for the universal kingdom has been revealed. Let no one mourn that they have fallen again and again, for forgiveness has risen from the grave. Let no one fear death, for the death of our Savior has set us free. He has destroyed it by enduring it. He destroyed hell when he descended into it. He put it in uproar even as it tasted of his flesh. Isaiah foretold this when he said, You, O hell, have been troubled by encountering him below. Hell was in an uproar because it was done away with. It was in an uproar because it is mocked. It is in an uproar for it has been destroyed. It is in an uproar for it is annihilated. It is in an uproar for it is now made captive. Hell took a body and discovered God. It took earth and encountered heaven. It took what it saw and was overcome by what it did not see. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, hell, where is your victory? Christ is risen, and you, O oh death, are annihilated. Christ is risen, and the evil ones are cast down. Christ is risen, and the angels rejoice. Christ is risen, and life is liberated. Christ is risen, and the tomb is emptied of the dead. For Christ, having risen from the dead, is become the firstfruits of those who have fallen asleep. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. 
God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you the gates of everlasting life. Amen. Amen. God the Son, who in bursting from the grave has won a glorious victory over sin and death, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. Amen. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of our risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen.
Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.